G'day, welcome back to the 40 channel. So today, after best spending so much time on this motor, it's now time to take another little break off it and look at the Carby. Now this is the big window. So this is the SD40. So this is uh, one of these Carbys that are quite sought after. And I didn't realize how sought after they were until I started seeing some of the crazy prices that these things are going for. But anyway, we're gonna strip this sucker down and we're gonna to try to rebuild it and bring it back to something like new. Let's give it a go, eh? Righto, the ASIN. SD40. Now these carbies were built from 1958 to 1966. So I was pretty stoked when I found that this carby was still attached to the motor. They've all got the manufacture date stamped on the side and some special little code. Now this one, next to the little TEQ symbol, we've got 5C6. So from what I understand, that's the 6th of March 1965. So everything's lining up to the 1965 motor. So this is the genuine carby straight off the motor. Just behind the big glass window, you've got a little indicator. Now, they came in blue and grey. This one, to me, looks grey. So hopefully we'll be able to clean it all up and we'll make this thing just absolutely magical. There's a few things I'm going to be using to strip and rebuild this. Some really good penetrant oil, so the R1 from Chemtools. I'm going to use some carby cleaner, be able to clean all the little bits and pieces up, strip it all down. We're going to plate all the little bits and pieces, so all the nuts, the outside of the big window, it's going to be all plated and hopefully come up. Right, so this kit came from Simon at Toyo Pad Australia. So now Simon's got a whole stack of parts available for early model Land Cruisers right up to your late model 1984. Now Simon's my go-to man if I ever need to find anything quite unique, especially for the F135 motor and the SD40 Carby, so that's pretty cool. Now another plug for Simon, if you don't want to hear some guy ramble on about stripping down something and rebuilding it, Simon actually has his own 40 series YouTube restoration page. So I'll put the link down below and be sure to check it out. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. Let's start stripping this sucker down and see what damage we've got to go into. First thing I'm going to do is pull off this window, so that gives me time to clean all this up. Okay, so we've just pulled off the, uh, the little housing that goes around the big window. The first thing I've noticed is this whole piece is all bowed out. And inside, just above that window, it sort of collapsed a bit, it's concaved in. So hopefully we'll be able to sort of straighten that out. The gaskets will seal it all, so I'm not too concerned. Anyway, we'll keep stripping it all down. Try to keep everything sort of separate and together. We're gonna to have little containers, little bags. We're going to keep all the sections together. Hopefully <laughs> that way, we won't get anything too mixed up. All right, down the bottom here, I've got some crazy little bit of uh, tie wire or something holding the thing together. So we'll just snip all that off. Right, we've got two little flathead screws just inside there that'll take this butterfly out, and then we should be able to pull that, then we should be able to slide that shaft out. Dead blow hammer will just give us a slight little tap. Very gently, I'm going to work that shaft out. Let's 
strip the rest of the bolts off, then we'll be able to clean all this up. All right, 12 mil spanner. It's a little fiber washer on it, so we'll keep that fiber washer. Again, 12 mil. Piece is brass. Alright, so the bottom body is totally stripped down. And everything for the bottom body is in one container. So that way, it's sort of in three sections. So that way we can keep everything together as we go. Hopefully. Let's go through with the uh, separate the top and the middle section. And this is where the glass is. So I'd already got excited and pulled that glass window frame off. The R1 has certainly done its job because nothing has uh, been really seized up or bound in, which is good. Didn't want anything to get stuck and try to have to battle with any of these nuts or bolts. Okay, so. Righto. We've stripped it down into three parts. Keep focusing on stripping the top part down. Actually, now that I've pulled it apart, you can really see this concave in here. Pull this little pin here out. That releases the float. Got our little adjusting needle just there. Got a 14 mil. Should be able to get this top part off. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bug, a fly, caught just inside that. Try and pull it out. Look at that. Same with this butterfly valve, we've got two flathead screws. So again, we'll give them a bit of a soak. Got our spring, we don't want to lose any of this stuff. So now our top part of the body is totally stripped and done as well. Alright, now we've got the middle part of the carpet where our actual glass is. So because that's concaved into there, it actually looks like it could possibly leak fuel out of the top. So that's something we're going to have to uh, keep an eye on. Our glass is out. See if we can get out. Right out. Now that's actually in really, really good condition. I'm stoked with that. So we're going to make sure we're going to take some extra care to clean that up. So that way it'll look really, really smick. Bottom here we've got a 14. Oh, it looks like there's another little wasp nest or fly nest or something all built up in there. We've got spider webs and cobwebs all up in here.
Let the plunger spring in there. It really doesn't want to let go, but I don't want to damage it either. This spring is going to be a bit tricky. We're going to try and find a new one because it's actually got a really fine. It's actually just started to corrode just in the center here. And right here is super. I'll move that back. Right here is super thin, just where it started to rust and corrode. So there's big risk of this spring actually breaking. All right, so as we explained before, this is concaved into a bit. So where the sight glass mounts onto that, we're not going to get that nice seal. It's probably going to leak. So apparently this is a fairly common thing with the SD40s. What I'm going to attempt to do is try to fix it. Hopefully we don't destroy it. So what I've done is I've just made up this very basic little plate with a thread on it, a big nut on it. That'll make, I've made that so that'll sit just inside there. And what we can do is slowly put a very small bit of heat over the whole top piece and we'll just jack that out and hopefully take that concurve out of it. Righto, so we'll just put that, uh, I might just use that ruler as a bit of a, a guide to help push it out. This is pretty exciting actually, it's actually working really, really well. Just heating the whole thing up really, really gently. Just a little bit of tension on that nut each time. So that is so close. Let me show you. Look at that. The tiny bit here that seems to be pushed out just a fraction more. I've just moved the position of it so it's just right on this end just to push that last little bit out and then hopefully we've nailed it. Well, there you go, I'm super stoked. Five mil plate, cut to size, some M16 threaded bar and a nut. Doesn't get any simpler than that. And this has come up not exactly dead on perfect, but I tell you what, it was about three mil concave in there. It was quite big. Now, we're lucky to have, or oh, maybe not even half a mil in one section, mate. That's fantastic. I'm happy with that. Really good. I can clean this up. We can continue with a rebuild of the SD40. There you go. Simple little fix for your concave on your SD40. Right, so as you've seen, we have broken the choke shaft out of the carby. So pretty devastated that that happened. So I tried to braise it together, I had no success. So the next thing I had to do was I jumped online and I bought a piece of brass rod. Now this piece of brass rod is exactly 6.3 millimeters. What are the odds of that being? Because the broken shaft is 6.3 millimeters. We slide it in and it is a absolute perfect fit. So how are we gonna turn this 
brass rod into a whole new choke shaft. Well, I'm going to show you. All right, so the first thing we need to do is measure it all up, make sure we get all the sizes spot on. We're going to mark those bits out with a hacksaw. And then with a file, we're going to file down the end. And with a small little hand ligature, we can clean up the center part. Get it pretty close. Check it with the vernius as we go. And then finish off with a file finish. Drill with a two and a half mil drill. to a 3 mil tap. Now this is getting pretty small and pretty fine. So it's really recommended that you're using a good cutting compound. Even though it's brass and it's soft, this is the last time you want a tap to break, especially when at this point of being so close to a finished product. Righto. There it is. So there is our finished product, a brand new choke shaft. So I'm pretty stoked about that. It is absolutely spot on to what it should be and it's ready to be installed back into this carby. Continue to rebuild this thing and get it all back together. Right, so the last thing we need to do, put into its little arm and we need to burr over the edge just as the original was. That way it'll be there for another, hopefully, 50 odd years. Oh no, there we go. So, the spring can go on that, we can turn our shaft. Right, so I was trying to figure out how I'm going to clean this carby up to give it a really nice finish. And just clean all the gunk out of it because I sat there with a wire brush, sat there with the uh, little scotch bright pads. It was just going to be painful and it was going to take forever. So I went down to Metalcraft Customs and Restorations, and Dave down there, he does a whole lot of restoration work. On top of that, he does soda blasting and vapor blasting. Now, this is way less aggressive than your normal sand blasting, which I normally do on uh, other bits and pieces. A bit like the carby and the transmission, those type of bits where you've got zinc and aluminium, it's a lot softer steel and you don't want to rip it to pieces. So check this out. This carby has come up absolutely like new. It looks fantastic. So I'm super stoked with this. Cleaning all the little bolts up, getting ready for them to be plated. So we're going to plate all them. This carby is going to come up absolute mint. So I'm really stoked with it and huge thanks to Metalcraft Customs and Restorations. Righto, so good news, bad news. Well, it depends on which way you look at it, I suppose. Good news is the carb is totally stripped down. All the components have been cleaned up. Now, unfortunately for you guys who are hoping to see all this come together, look, don't get me wrong, so was I, it's not gonna happen in this video. And you probably won't see it happen for probably another two to three weeks. Why? What? What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. I'm going on a much needed holiday with the family to the beach. So I am absolutely stoked. Only a couple of weeks ago, another bit of tragedy happened. My wife's car, the Toyota Prado, which actually has a Land Cruiser badge on it. Now I know some of you guys are cringing straight away because it's not a Land Cruiser. But anyway, they stuck the badge on there. The engine blew up. Devastating time, worst possible time, just getting ready to go away. Christmas just turned up and that was our gift. Bang! So instead of the Prado coming away and towing the van, I've actually borrowed my father-in-law's 79 series Land Cruiser and it's gonna be doing the hauling of the van up to the holidays. So I still get to be in a Toyota and this time it's a real Land Cruiser. 
Anyway, guys, we'll see what we can come up with. Hopefully, I'll get the chance to meet some other 40 series enthusiasts while we're up at the coast. And hopefully, we'll get a chance to film some of their rigs and be able to share some of their builds as well. You never know who you're going to come across or who you're going to meet. Anyway, guys, really appreciate your support. And until next time, take care of yourselves.